Hey guys, how you doing? So I thought I would do a teaching segment uh, that I've done before, but uh, I'm kind of tweaking it a little bit because of manifestation from the tower energy that everybody always fears. Okay, so what we get is, so basically we're looking at manifestation from a seven. So you get the seven of swords, obviously the chariot and the major card, the major arcana cards. Okay, so when you look at this, I find it as a life path seven. Okay, difficult in order to manifest because I have ADHD, which is brain fog. Okay, so this is also going to teach you about reading tarot cards and how to relate things because how you manifest it shows you how to do everything that you want to do in life, it shows you how to do it through tarot, believe it or not. So, uh, Seven of Cups can also be ADHD, it can be brain fog and confusion. And I don't know, and I'm adding fear onto a manifestation of the tower because I think, think, and thought that somebody else has other options. So because I think that they are, and communication is quite bleak, then I think that as soon as they come running, I'll come running back towards them in order to give them attention of what they want, because that comes from a six to a seven. Okay, so six of wands you would look at, and I'm going to come back whenever I want, knowing that you will give me what I want, and then you'll get into a complete dynamic of chasing and running and basically waiting on the person in order to open up and choose you, alchemy, right? So waiting them for to choose you because they could be very in and out like Mustard Dave and they're backwards and they're forwards and they're in and then they're out and then we talk and we don't and they're gone and they're absconded me and they've ghosted me and they're not speaking and then when they come back, I go running back to them, wanting their attention and so on and so forth because my energy of how I've been manifesting is what will now go back to this one cut. Okay, so forget about like, if you've got ADHD or mental health, trust me, it's going to be very difficult in order to be able to keep a stable mind because your mind will be obviously of mental health. And if you have mental health problems, definitely if you're a life path seven, you could have, like I said, it, it would be ADHD, brain fog, confusion, distant, manifesting from like being very emotionally distant and not really paying attention to certain things. And that will explain this. So if you look at, walking into a bar for instance right and you get someone that's kind of sitting there and they're doing the seven of cups and they're kind of like looking about and they're very emotionally distant who is going to want to talk to a person that is of a vibration of sturdy emotionally stable knows what they want very good fun high vibration now you don't have to worry about how is my vibration okay you just have to look at the basics like I said, if you was to walk into a public area and someone was very nice, very kind, very genuine, okay, they had a lot of energy about them, they had a lot of spunk about them, okay, and everybody gravitated towards the person because they were very kind, very genuine, very lovely, okay, and they would give and they would kind of buy you, a, I don't know, a drink or some food or they would come up to you with confidence, they would start a conversation with you, if they were in a conversation of people already and they were the center of attraction, you would create law of attraction because someone would see a person of center of attraction. Everybody wants to know this person. Why? Because they're kind, considerate, genuine, good conversation, very funny. Everybody seems to be gravitating around this person. Why? It's not because their vibration is high. It's just because they're feeling extremely good at that point and they have great communication skills. We're always going back to the magician, guys, right? Let me just make sure I'm recording. But you always go back to the magician. The magician has everything that they need in order to be able to create law of attraction and a manifestation, right? Because of everything being on the table. So it's kind of like they have good communication skills. They're very passionate, loving, flirting, okay? They're kind of very quirky, a little bit eccentric. They have good stable money. They have a good job. They're not very, like, tight-fisted and quiet, reserved, can't really spend any money, can't go anywhere, a little bit of a trendsetter in a way, could be slightly different than everybody else, okay? Which would mean that I'm an individual, I'm on my own, I do things myself, I have, I'm have. i a self-made man, I have qualities about me that is not the same as everybody else. You know, if you get a drunk, pissed person that goes for a drunk, pissed person, what you're going to get is a connection. People that love getting drunk and pissed and everything else and what you're going to be. In the end, long run, right? In the long run, 
okay? So then you would get people that run away from each other, okay? But one good thing to watch is, like, on my join button below, it's only $3, that's all. 3 or $4, and you can watch 150 of these, okay, where I express about chasing and running and numerology, where your numerology of person can relate to so much that you can't actually manifest, <laughs> Why? Very briefly, because of a set set of rules of preordained destiny of a person being a person. Okay, you can't change who you are. Your life changes who how you feel. The people that you're around, the group of people that are doing the same things that see you for your value. Okay, but because it's preordained, but with numerology, when you get say like I don't know, say a life path seven and a life path two. Okay, seven, eight, nine. Together, as a seven and a two, you would make a Libra energy. So you would have to look at the cards of it being Libra. High priestess, justice, being judged, silent, quiet, very reserved, not giving too much away, a lot of secrets, a lot of like not speaking, not talking, not revealing anything, not really telling you too much about my life. I don't really want too much, you know, no one knowing what's happening. You know, it's very under the cloak, under the curtains, no one's knowing anything. Now I'm going back to a seven, okay, of my life path connected to a two, right? I go through all of this. If if it's too quick and advanced for you, I'm sorry, but you will need the other readings, okay? Because it because numerology is the way I read, right? If you've seen me as a reader, I don't do too much too much on YouTube anymore. Um, it is all on the join button below. Just don't have the time in order to do it, <laughs> right? <clears throat> but it re it will relate to like you know your your life path number and their life path number. The person that you connect with and meet, you add those two numbers together and you find the major and the minor cards of tarot and then you can see your story you can see the karmic value of stuff that you go through so now if you guys haven't done that what i want you to do is take any kind of individual that you want that you're connected to in life you can do it as a daughter or a son or a, a metaphysical or physical connection okay and look for your life path number and theirs and add them together and find the number Get out your tarot deck. Don't tell me that you haven't got one because if you're a tarot watcher and you haven't got a deck by now, <laughs> right? So take out all of the cards that represent that number and look for the major and the minor cards. And there you will be able to see the story of things that you will go through, okay, as a connection with that person. They're the major ones that will be major instance of milestones and the minor instance that are also major depending on like I said, if it's a five, y'all, <laughs> it can be difficult, right? Five of swords, five of wands, uh, temperance, and the hierophant, right? So marriage, commitments, anger, aggression, very opinionated, telling you what to do, not telling me what to do, I'm not listening, blah, blah, blah. But it also has to add up to your astrology, okay, which is your numerology as well. Makes it more difficult to know the fact that you can manifest someone that may not be compatible to you. That's why you have to. Com that's why you have to go through a lot of numer numerology and numbers to meet the right person, right? You know about time not really being very relevant, so you have to go through a lot of numbers to meet one that is compatible with every astrology chart and every numerology part of your chart that matches up really well, where you don't really get the conflict. Okay. Say so if you've got a moon sign of myself, Gemini, and also in Mars, okay, that connects to somebody else's Gemini moon, that would be a six and a six. So you would get a 12, you would get a three and a Pisces, right? So a lot of delays, a lot of being stuck, and so on and so forth. Three of Pentacles, three of Wands, third parties. <clears throat> You'd have to watch that. Anyway, so manifestation from the Tower energy. So we're looking at a person that has everything under control. They've got everything that they need. Their emotions are quite sturdy and they give off a vibration of the tower. Now the tower is like a radio station. So that's why I called my other channel, uh, angel radio. Okay. Yeah. Where I make music, tone of voice and everything else, but the tower, it's like an antenna. Okay. An antenna of Duracell battery. Okay. Like your vibrator, <laughs> you're not going to get off on a good vibration. <laughs> Sorry, shouldn't be out, but you know that people say that the way that you manifest is through the highest vibration. What is the highest vibration that a person can reach in life when you use a vibrator? If you're a female and using a vibrator, what do you do? Okay, you think about what? 
even if you're with someone, sometimes a lot of people actually think about someone else. Okay, if they can't get off for the person that they're with, they think about someone else. If you're doing it to yourself, you're manifesting from a vibration of thinking about somebody. Okay, so you're fantasizing. When you're fantasizing and you use one of these, gentlemen or ladies, whatever you want, okay, you hit the peak of a, um orgasm. Right? So you reach the peak of an orgasm and you get an explosion of what? energy okay release of energy i have arrived dear <laughs> right i've arrived and then who seemed to have arrived at that time when i was doing these things okay. so coming out of the realms of that you're kind of looking at this being an antenna of energy okay when your energy is of a battery and it's very low okay you are depleted of energy you're not going to walk into a bar and be like, yeah, you're right, brother. You're getting on, Dave. Let's like have it. Let's have it, son. You know, and be like very high, very bright, very quick, very switched on. Got good comebacks. <laughs> I got very good comeback skills. Like I'm being funny, and someone will say something, and I've got a very quick response. And you, you're really quick witted, bro. I love. I like how you're like switched on and like, well, I'm on it today, bro. Right? That's because you're high energy. Right? So that is, like I said, it's what people say of a high vibration. It's not that I'm sitting at home feeling terrible and blah, 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 or I'm overtired. You know, this is why you can't really manifest because people have work. They have bills. They have society beliefs. They have things where they have children. They're stuck in bad circumstances. They have to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. They have to rush to work. You can't fully always have this vibration about you that will really allow you to do that unless you are just really, like I said, talented within your life being a lot easier than anyone else. And you can't have things like ADHD or bipolar where it affects your mind and your energy, right? It, it messes me up, right? <laughs> but I digress. So it's a battery, okay? It has depleted energy and then loads of energy and then it runs out and then it builds itself up so i say to people you cannot heal when you are on your own you need a source of energy to heal so when you are healing if you are on your own you're just a battery that's dead that's depleted of, uh, depleted of energy what does a battery need in order to recharge its energy a battery charger so what charges the battery? Another person that has what? Light, vibrant energy. So then we go to light workers. Light workers that get drained by giving all of their energy to someone else that isn't equally giving it back. That's where we get lessons around waiting, protection, guarding, manifestation of confusion, brain fog. Have they got other options? Because when you're a low vibration, you don't have the confidence when you don't have the confidence, your mind will start to think, oh, what if they pick someone else? What if I've got competition of another person? Oh, my God, what if they don't choose me? I feel lonely on my own. You go to a five, your energy's low, you start to get paranoid. You start to think you go to another numerology, astrology placement of like Virgo or a nine or the one that you're connected with that makes a nine. Okay, very complex is not easy. Okay, this is why you more than likely won't be able to do it. This is why everybody will teach you and charge you how to manifest, but you do it and it doesn't work and you wonder why is it so fucking hard? Because they've just been blessed to be able to do it, but they're charging you to do it and it doesn't work for you. You'll probably realise why. Because your numerology and astrology is more complex than what it is yours. Right? They are able to do it through their astrology and numerology, and they'll teach you and make money, but you won't be able to, and you'll get pissed off wondering why. Right? So let's go back down to it again. Okay, so the tower. Okay, so it is a battery. Healing. You cannot heal as a battery or recharge itself without another human being of like Jesus that walks the earth in order to help people heal. Okay, three. Sacrifice. Easter, just so, so happens that we're doing it on Easter. Resurrection, Capricorn to Piscean, right? Hanging on a cross, one, two, three. Okay, so battery. 
needs another person in order to recharge its energy. It's given me a light of life. It's given me a lifeline in order to realize that there is hope for this connection at the end of the tunnel. Then when your energy mixes with this energy, you get dark and light. More than likely, unless you meet a light and a light, and then you are a winner, Dave. If you meet someone where your energy connects and there is not really much problem with a connection and there is no if, buts, maybe Dave don't know fucking hell my past and I'm paranoid and I'm worried and I can't get over my past and I'm this happened to me and that happened to me and oh my God, my life is terrible. Oh, when your light and your dark energy connects together, you will get so much of this that you will know that you are connected to a karmic energy that you are trying to help along the way. And then you will go to sacrificing your energy and your time in order to be under the illusion that this might work eventually. Okay. So you can kind of pick up on your intuition, right? So, again, very quickly, if you guys are kind of not really following, that if you meet somebody and there is a lot of confusion, there's a lot of paranoia, there's a lot of work to go through, there's a lot of, like, are they seeing someone else? What if they are? What if they don't want to be with me? What if they reject me? What if this doesn't happen? And are my expectations of this working after so much time that I've put into this person and it doesn't seem to be getting anywhere then you know what you're going through is an extremely weird, strange, karmic cycle with a person that has a lot of past history to get over. So then you will go to what? A milestone in life, something that needs to be crossed before we get there, right? Sorry. But a milestone in life is a seven, okay? meaning that I've come up to a point in my life that's really important that has to be overcome first before I can meet you or be with you and we are united together as a person. Now, these can be, okay, thoughts, feelings, someone that's married, someone that needs to get divorced, someone that's at a distance that the pond needs to be overcrossed so I can get with you, so I can be with you. You needing to sort your mind out. You need to realize that you don't want to be single, that you like me, that I put so much time and effort in towards you, showing you that I'm willing for a commitment and a relationship. But you need to overcome the fear first that I am the only one for you, right? But you need to do that with no force. But I'm not going to go into that. So sorry if I go off, okay, because I could do this all day long, okay? Um, so the tower is a battery, okay? And it's fulfilled itself full of energy. Normally, for me as a person, that's in the morning because I have ADHD, so my energy goes down very, very, very quickly. But when I first go out, if I go to the boozer, I am full of energy, right? I am switched on, bam, like that. And everybody, I, I put this to practice, <clears throat> everybody wants to know me everybody's like, Bill, Steve, blah, blah, blah. How you getting on, brother? Yeah, no, I'm good. Do you want a drink? Yeah, go on then, brother. I'll have one. You know, not alcohol, not for me. Okay. I have what we call Bill's gay drink. <laughs> so my nickname is Bill, but my real name is Steve, but everybody calls me Bill. Uh, just ask my mate Michael that is a cancerian. Don't worry about it. It's, <laughs> it's a running joke. Okay. But, right, I go in, I order this this drink, like uh, apple juice and soda water and ice, right? So I go in and I'm full of energy and everyone's like, Bill, Steve, blah, blah, blah. Meet a new person, talk to new people. A calling happens. Loads of times I walk into a pub. I met this guy the other day that was, bless his heart, man. He was at the verge of suicide. He'd lost his wife. He was grieving. He was on the first date for a long time, like after a long time of grieving, he was basically in tears when he was speaking to me. He said, how come I can speak to you? And you you suddenly just spoke to me because I picked it up that I was supposed to be in there at that time. And I helped him grieve. And he said, I feel so much better that you've spoke to me. I didn't think I was going to be able to speak to anyone when I came here. I was so worried. It's the first time I've been out in ages. But you will find those situations when you're at a high vibration, right? Your calling will start to happen right? You'll meet people, you'll see people, and they'll either be a part of your spiritual calling than your job, or it's to do with love or something like that. Okay, it's not just about love, right? It's about love for being who you are and what you are, that people are gravitated towards you, that see you as a high vibrational being that has great advice, is switched on, that knows what they're doing, knows what they're saying, know what they want and who they are. Okay, 
honest, compassionate, caring, loving, sharing, listening to people, okay? So that kind of vibration when we go to your love life represents the tower, full of energy. I have everything that I need under control, my emotions, my feelings, my job, my money, but mainly my thoughts, my thoughts, okay? My thoughts affect my feelings and my feelings affect, affect my thoughts. <clears throat> so when you are at a high vibration like this, you will attract energy from moths to a flame, twin flame energy and moths, okay? The sacrificial energy of a moth that uh, is metamorphosis, the change. People don't, but circumstances do. When will there be a change? So you wait for change. But do I? Do I go running when this person comes back and I'm at a high vibration because they can feel the fact that they want to know me? But who am I connecting to that needs help or support? This is where your intuition will come into play. Okay, because don't forget, when you are attracting energy, you've seen the film, right? That is when the person goes into the dark, okay? The little boy goes under a spell and whatnot and he goes into the dark, into the nothing, it's a horror film, right? I am a horror buff, sorry, but I am. Goes into the nothing. And then when the father goes to get the son, they get them out, but the woman follows them back and the, all of those monsters are kind of attracting towards the person that's walking through the darkness, right? Virgo energy, right? A year nine going to year one. <clears throat> so, okay, going through the dark, you attract energy of good and bad, light and evil, okay? Virgo and light energy. Okay, so you attract the energy. There it is. To use your intuition is to know, is this where I am under illusion that this is happening? I feel it and I know it, but where are my thoughts going? Where are my thoughts going? Because when my thoughts are of me and present, okay, they're not going left or right towards wanting, needing, thinking, I don't really care, I'm not really looking for, you know. So you've got to be present because if you are in the past, you have PTSD, okay, and panic and God knows what else, fear of rejection, fear of abandonment, bad relationships, so on and so forth, aggression, anger, low vibration, thoughts manifest the future. So what does the future bring? Anxiety, what if? Anxiety, even if it's not panic attacks, it is what if they have other options? What if they don't want to be with me? What happens if I find that this person, after all of this time, is cheating on me or talking to someone else and doesn't want to be with me? What if this? What if that, right? So what are you manifesting? The what ifs. So you'll be stuck in a, a Jeff. Or what if Jeff, Jeff, Steph, Steve and Sarah? But what if? Jeff? So what if this happens? What if that happens? What if it doesn't? So the person is making you think of the future of more hidden energy of like, I don't know. So people will talk to you and say, how are you getting on with your commitment? You say, I am none the wiser, Dave. I really don't know. This person is in and out of my life like mustard. They come back when they want something and then they go and they're kind of coming across as genuine. But really what they're not doing is committing to me and I don't really know and... I don't know whether to cut this person off or cut them out or just start putting up some boundaries and start not being so willing in order to just give to this person that isn't really giving me anything back. I need to start thinking, well, you know, how long's a piece of string? How long have we been doing this, right? So I need to start taking back my power and realising, shit, how long have I been thinking that this might work out? How long's it been going on? I can't remember now. How long have I known you? How long have we been getting to know each other? How long has nothing ever really changed and nothing's really happened? So now I start to realise that I need to go back to the magician and start realising, okay, what am I thinking about most of the time from the energy of the tower? What is my radio signal that I'm giving off? Okay, my antenna, when it goes, like if you look at a television, you know, programmed mind, okay, tell our vision to believe what? Okay, so our television is our feelings and the television tells our minds what to give off a signal that goes out and then everything comes back to say oh look you got bbc one bbc two channel four <laughs> if you're from britain okay then you got sky <laughs> so what do you want to watch 
Okay, so your antenna is kind of going out, giving off loads of different signals, so you can never really always attract one person. Okay, so you can do, depends on how much you've been thinking in the past. Okay. So, also, don't forget, sometimes if you go from a relationship straight into another one without having a clear conscience of mind, you can also manifest what you was doing five or six months ago. If you was in a relationship that was very confusing, there was a lot of fights and aggression, there was a lot of splitting up, getting angry, splitting up, getting back together, splitting up, getting back together. Okay, very confused, they're gaslighting me. No, you're gaslighting me. No, I'm gaslighting you. You're coming across as a narcissist. You're trying to control your feelings away from me controlling yours. What's wrong with you? We're mirroring each other. We're doing all of this. We're doing that, right? So you go through all of those scenarios of, say, however long you go through it. Okay, that, if being then single and you more than likely meet a new connection and a door opens of a new person straight away and you're picking up the same kind of signals, that's because you've manifested from the relationship that you have just come out of. I don't really know. <laughs> okay, single, more than together. Splitting up, more than together. Not speaking, not talking. A lot of non-communication and then communication. Right? It's just a different person and it's in the future but it's the same as what happened from a last one. That's why they say, let's go to counselling in order to be able to grieve. Why do I keep meeting people along my journey that are exactly the same as the last one? Why do they keep cheating on me? Why do they keep arguing with me? Why do they keep getting aggressive? Why do they possibly have other options? Right? Because it's kind of tweaked. The energy of the past and the future is kind of tweaked from what you was mainly thinking about when you was with someone. You was with them and that's what you were going through and thinking about. 24-7, very difficult karmic energy, thinking about it a lot. So when you are and you don't give yourself time in order to be able to come, the magician, to be able to clear, have a clear conscience where you are not thinking so much about the past, it takes practice, you have to think presently, a light, a camera, a lampshade, a bigger lampshade, turned off television, a big ass fucking TV screen there, okay, an electric bed, silk sheets, a razor, my phone, PS4, PS5, PlayStation, Xbox, right? So I'm driving, right? So road, green car, red car, blue car. Practice it. You're thinking presently, not what's happening for tea. <laughs> what am I going to have? Because my, my stomach is telling me that I'm hungry. What should I cook tonight? That's the future. No, nope. no. Nope. Okay, so you have to be very present majority of the time to, to not let your mind drift off into the future of anything that's going to establish your present self, okay? Because you have to remain in this timeline. When you think about the future, your mind is going into a future timeline. When you're going into the past, your mind is going into, obviously, a past timeline. Can you remember when this happened? Can you remember when we did that back in 1964, Dave? Oh, yeah. And you start talking about some with someone that what happened in the past. So you're living out the past, right? When you start thinking about a job that you want or is any work coming up or, oh, how am I going to pay my bills? The children are going to go to school, the blah, blah, blah. This is going to happen, right? You're thinking about the future and you get distracted by the present. So people get forgot in the present with people that are thinking more future. They've got a lot more on than people in the present. Right? So say if you're connecting two person and we bring another energy into this one, you get a person that is thinking more about the future because they've got, say, I don't know, children, more of a mortgage, less of a job, less money, more hours. Okay, stressful circumstances, possibly married. In an un unlawful, un blah 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 situation, and you get into a third party, maybe with someone that has a lot more to think about the future of what isn't happening yet, and when will it happen, and when will it end, and God knows what, connected to a person that is more present. Then what you get is the present and the future. So you get a timeline, right? You get a timeline where someone is present in the tense of like, yes, I want a commitment. How about you? Well, I'm already in something. So what needs to happen? A milestone, there's a block, there's something that needs to happen first before we get here. Okay, so what am I making you do? Think about the future. To wait. 
to wait for the future to happen because mine hasn't, my past hasn't resolved itself yet. This is why it's going to be, don't listen to people that are going to tell you that you're going to be able to manifest shit, bro. <laughs> right? Because, you know, when you're manifesting, you're going to be able, you're going to meet all sorts of people, Dave, that are like past, present, future, and God knows what else and stuff that they've got going on, right? So it's poppycock nonsense shit, right? So you got Seven of Pentacles. There is something that needs to happen that I'm waiting for first before this happens, right? The past, I'm living in the present, okay? So there's the milestone that I have to do in order to make, wait for you to catch up with the present. Even if a person is in the future, they're still trying to catch up with the present, right? Because they're caught behind. I'm still caught in something that I can't get out of that makes me think about how bad my past was. So they're stuck, right? So they're stuck and you're waiting for them to become unstuck, right? To see the complexities of how it's going to be difficult to fully manifest anything in your life. You tell me, my bruv, because if you're a person that hasn't got bills and stress and worries and, you know, the gas man and the, the tax bills are all coming in and you've got to go to work and you have to, literally have to think about the future. When you're at work, you've got to think about the future, okay? So you're going to be thinking about the future a lot, okay? <clears throat> Unless you're a monk. So what we're looking at, if we go back to it, is the tower. A battery. A radio signal that goes out in order to bring energy back to you. If your energy is very low, okay, you're going to walk into a bar and people are not really going to want to know you. They're probably going to ask and say, what's the matter? Oh, oh. do you want to go over what's happened? The past? Yeah. Okay, let's reflect and go over the past and mate, what's happened? <laughs> not like, nah, nothing, bro. I'm fine. All right, let's crack on with what we're doing now. Let me think about more about what we're doing now so I can have a really good time and I can attract someone else, right? Instead of like, but what if they see me or I don't or I can't or, you know, I, I, I can't meet someone because I like the person I'm kind of waiting for and I, I yeah, oh, <laughs> okay? So your mind starts to wonder thinking, well, I can't really have a good time because I'm waiting on a person that hasn't seen my value, hasn't seen my worth, right? somebody else will but they're not here yet bah. but the person that I'm waiting for is here but the person in the future might not be here so I have to quickly take the person that's here because I might not get another chance to be with someone else that I don't know of yet so I've got to quickly take it real quick right. Mm -hmm. right so it's about the people that you meet, because I would pretty much say, because my mind has just switched on to other people watching it saying, yeah, I'm in that kind of like want to be single, don't really want to be with anybody. I'm kind of connecting with someone. And then I'm also connecting to the people that are watching that are saying, yeah, I'm in that same scenario, wanting someone that doesn't want a commitment or a relationship. <laughs> it's, it's kind of both. So you've kind of got that. Like I said, it's, it's a catch 22. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to teach you about how difficult that is to be able to fully have everything under control, okay, your emotions, your feelings, everything that you have about you should be seen and noticed by someone. If it isn't and they're very flaky and they're very everything else, then really they've got a lot to deal with, their future and their mind. Right? So... At the moment, I'm going to leave it at that. But I want, you know, I want to let you know that all of these videos that I've been doing for years, <laughs> for a long time, 17 years, I've been a psychic medium. Just because I have 250 views does not mean that I don't quite know what I'm talking about. You can either believe me or you don't. I'm also trying to teach you how to read cards. <laughs> okay, but the other ones are where it is down on the table and you can see what I'm saying. But Go through all of these. There's 150 of them. If you want them, the join button below, 2 or $3, dollars, doesn't cost you much. You also get all of your monthlies, all of your weeklies, okay? So they're all over there at 2 or $3, dollars, and you can stay and go and come back whenever you like. But if you're wondering about where my readings are, that's where they are, okay? 
So there's a teaching video for you. Thanks very much, guys. Really do appreciate it. Share this, like it, do whatever you want. Give it to your mother, your father, okay? Don't be paranoid. Don't think, what happens if someone sees the fact that I like someone? Just share it on your multimedia, man, okay? Don't be worried. If you're worried, you're worried about what? The future, <laughs> right? Don't be anxious, okay? Because then you're paranoid. If you're paranoid, you're under a karmic cloak of illusion of someone else knowing what you're doing with your own life, okay? So thanks very much. Really do appreciate it, and I'll see you soon.